In graph theory, an edge coloring of a graph is an assignment of colors to the edges of the graph so that no two adjacent edges have the same color. For example, the figure to the right shows an edge coloring of a graph by the colors red, blue, and green. Edge colorings are one of several different types of graph coloring. The edge coloring problem asks whether it is possible to color the edges of a given graph using at most k different colors, for a given value of k, or with the fewest possible colors. The minimum required number of colors for the edges of a given graph is called the chromatic index of the graph. For example, the edges of the graph in the illustration can be colored by three colors but cannot be colored by two colors. So the graph shown has chromatic index 3. By Vising's theorem, the number of colors needed to edge color a simple graph is either its maximum degree delta or delta plus 1. For some graphs, such as bipartite graphs and high-degree planar graphs, the number of colors is always delta, and for multigraphs, the number of colors may be as large as 3 delta, 2. There are polynomial time algorithms that construct optimal colorings of bipartite graphs, and colorings of non-bipartite simple graphs that use at most delta plus one colors. However, the general problem of finding an optimal edge coloring is NP-complete and the fastest known algorithms for it take exponential time. Many variations of the edge coloring problem, in which an assignment of colors to edges must satisfy other conditions than non-adjacency, have been studied. Edge colorings have applications in scheduling problems and in frequency assignment for fiber optic networks. Examples a cycle graph may have its edges colored with two colors if the length of the cycle is even. Simply alternate the two colors around the cycle. However, if the length is odd, three colors are needed. A complete graph not with n vertices is edge colorable with n-1 colors when n is an even number. This is a special case of Baranieri's theorem. Seufer provides the following geometric construction of a coloring in this case. Place n points at the vertices and center of a regular-sided polygon. For each color class, include one edge from the center to one of the polygon vertices, and all of the perpendicular edges connecting pairs of polygon vertices. However, when n is odd, n colors are needed. Each color can only be used for two edges, a one, n fraction of the total. Several authors have studied edge colorings of the odd graphs. N regular graphs in which the vertices represent teams of N-1 players selected from a pool of two N1 players, and in which the edges represent possible pairings of these teams. The case that N equals 3 gives the well-known Peterson graph. As Biggs explains the problem, the players wish to find a schedule for these pairings such that each team plays each of its six games on different days of the week with Sundays off for all teams, that is, formalizing the problem mathematically, they wish to find a six-edge coloring of the six regular odd graph O6. When n is 3, 4, or 8, an edge coloring of on requires n plus 1 colors, but when it is 5, 6, or 7, only n colors are needed. Definitions as with its vertex counterpart, an edge coloring of a graph when mentioned without any qualification, is always assumed to be a proper coloring of the edges, meaning no two adjacent edges are assigned the same color. Here, two edges are considered to be adjacent when they share a common vertex. An edge coloring of a graph G may also be thought of as equivalent to a vertex coloring of the line graph L. The graph that has a vertex for every edge of G and an edge for every pair of adjacent edges in G. A proper edge coloring with K different colors is called a K edge coloring. A graph that can be assigned a K edge coloring is said to be K edge colorable. The smallest number of colors needed in a edge coloring of a graph G is the chromatic index, or edge chromatic number, chi. The chromatic index is also sometimes written using the notation chi 1. In this notation, the subscript 1 indicates that edges are one-dimensional objects. A graph is k-edge chromatic if its chromatic index is exactly k. 
The chromatic index should not be confused with the chromatic number chi or chi zero. The minimum number of colors needed in a proper vertex coloring of G. Unless stated otherwise all graphs are assumed to be simple. In contrast to multigraphs in which two or more edges may connecting the same pair of endpoints and in which there may be self-loops. For many problems in edge coloring, simple graphs behave differently from multigraphs and additional care is needed to extend theorems about edge colorings of simple graphs to the multigraph case. Relation to matching A matching in a graph G is a set of edges, no two of which are adjacent. A perfect matching is a matching that includes edges touching all of the vertices of the graph, and a maximum matching is a matching that includes as many edges as possible. In an edge coloring, the set of edges with any one color must all be non-adjacent to each other, so they form a matching. That is, a proper edge coloring is the same thing as a partition of the graph into disjoint matchings. If the size of a maximum matching in a given graph is small, then many matchings will be needed in order to cover all of the edges of the graph. Expressed more formally, this reasoning implies that if a graph has m edges in total, and if at most beta edges may belong to a maximum matching, then every edge coloring of the graph must use at least m beta of different colors. For instance, the 16 vertex planar graph shown in the illustration has m equals 24 edges. In this graph there can be no perfect matching, for, if the center vertex is matched, the remaining unmatched vertices may be grouped into three different connected components with four, five, and five vertices, and the components with an odd number of vertices cannot be perfectly matched. However, the graph has maximum matchings with seven edges, so beta equals seven. Therefore, the number of colors needed to edge color the graph is at least 24 sevenths. And since the number of colors must be an integer it is at least 4. For a regular graph of degree k that does not have a perfect matching, this lower bound can be used to show that at least k plus 1 colors are needed. In particular, this is true for a regular graph with an odd number of vertices. For such graphs, by the handshaking lemma, k must itself be even. However, the inequality chi m beta does not fully explain the chromatic index of every regular graph, because there are regular graphs that do have perfect matchings but that are not k-edge colorable. For instance, the Peterson graph is regular, with m equals 15 and with beta equals 5 edges in its perfect matchings, but it does not have a 3-edge coloring. Relation to degree. Vising's theorem the edge chromatic number of a graph G is very closely related to the maximum degree delta, the largest number of edges incident to any single vertex a G. Clearly, chi, delta, for if delta different edges all meet at the same vertex V, then all of these edges need to be assigned different colors from each other. And that can only be possible if there are at least delta colors available to be assigned. Vising's theorem states that this bound is almost tight. For any graph the edge chromatic number is either delta or delta plus 1. When chi equals delta, g is said to be of class 1, otherwise, it is said to be of class 2. Every bipartite graph is of class 1, and almost all random graphs are of class 1. However, it is NP-complete to determine whether an arbitrary graph is of class 1. Vising proved that planar graphs of maximum degree at least eight are of class 1 and conjectured that the same is true for planar graphs of maximum degree 7 or 6. On the other hand, there exist planar graphs of maximum degree ranging from 2 through 5 that are of class 2. The conjecture has since been proven for graphs of maximum degree 7. Bridgeless planar cubic graphs are all of class 1. This is an equivalent form of the four-color theorem. Regular graphs A1 factorization of AK regular graph, a partition of the edges of the graph into perfect matchings, is the same thing as AK edge coloring of the graph. That is, a regular graph has a one factorization if and only if it is of class 1. As a special case of this, a three-edge coloring of a cubic graph is sometimes called a Tate coloring. 
Not every regular graph has a one-factorization, for instance, the Peterson graph does not. More generally the snarks are defined as the graphs that, like the Peterson graph, are bridgeless, three regular, and of class 2. According to the theorem of Koenig, every bipartite regular graph has a one-factorization. The theorem was stated earlier in terms of projective configurations and was proven by Ernst Steinitz. Multigraphs for multigraphs, in which multiple parallel edges may connect the same two vertices. Results that are similar to but weaker than Vising's theorem are known relating the edge chromatic number chi, the maximum degree delta, and the multiplicity mu, the maximum number of edges in any bundle of parallel edges. As a simple example showing that Vising's theorem does not generalize to multigraphs, consider a Shannon multigraph. A multigraph with three vertices and three bundles of mu parallel edges connecting each of the three pairs of vertices. In this example, delta equals two mu parallel edges, but the edge chromatic number is three mu edges in total, and every two edges are adjacent. So all edges must be assigned different colors to each other. In a result that inspired Vising, Shannon showed that this is the worst case. Chi, delta for any multigraph G. Additionally, for any multigraph G, chi, delta plus mu, an inequality that reduces to Vising's theorem in the case of simple graphs equals 1. Algorithms. Because the problem of testing whether a graph is class 1 is NP-complete, there is no known polynomial time algorithm for edge coloring every graph with an optimal number of colors. Nevertheless a number of algorithms have been developed that relax one or more of these criteria. They only work on a subset of graphs, or they do not always use an optimal number of colors, or they do not always run in polynomial time. Optimally coloring special classes of graphs in the case of bipartite graphs or multigraphs with maximum degree delta. The optimal number of colors is exactly delta. Cole, OST and Shura showed that an optimal edge coloring of these graphs can be found in the near linear time bound O, where M is the number of edges in the graph. Simpler, but somewhat slower, algorithms are described by Cole and Hopcroft and Elon. The algorithm of Elon begins by making the input graph regular, without increasing its degree or significantly increasing its size. By merging pairs of vertices that belong to the same side of the bipartition and then adding a small number of additional vertices and edges. Then, if the degree is odd, Alon finds a single perfect matching in near linear time, assigns it a color, and removes it from the graph, causing the degree to become even. Finally, Alon applies an observation of Gabo. That selecting alternating subsets of edges in an Euler tour of the graph partitions it into two regular subgraphs. To split the edge coloring problem into two smaller subproblems, and his algorithm solves the two subproblems recursively. The total time for his algorithm is O. For planar graphs with maximum degree delta 7, the optimal number of colors is again exactly delta. With the stronger assumption that delta 9, it is possible to find an optimal edge coloring in linear time. Algorithms that use more than the optimal number of colors Misra and Gries and Gabo al. Describe polynomial time algorithms for coloring any graph with delta plus 1 colors. Meeting the bound given by Vising's theorem, see Misra and Gris edge coloring algorithm. For multigraphs, Karloff and Schmoyes present the following algorithm, which they attribute to Eli Upfall. Make the input multigraph G Eulerian by adding a new vertex connected by an edge to every odd degree vertex, find an Euler tor, and choose an orientation for the tor. Form a bipartite graph H in which there are two copies of each vertex a G, one on each side of the bipartition with an edge from a vertex U on the left side of the bipartition to a vertex V on the right side of the bipartition whenever the oriented tor has an edge from U to V and G. Apply a bipartite graph edge coloring algorithm to H. Each color class in H corresponds to a set of edges in G that form a subgraph with maximum degree 2, that is, a disjoint union of paths and cycles. 
So for each color class in H it is possible to form three color classes in G. The time for the algorithm is bounded by the time to edge color a bipartite graph O using the algorithm of Cole, OST and Shira. The number of colors this algorithm uses is at most close to, but not quite the same as Shannon's bound if. It may also be made into a parallel algorithm in a straightforward way. In the same paper, Karloff and Schmoyes also present a linear time algorithm for coloring multigraphs of maximum degree 3 with four colors that operates on similar principles. Their algorithm adds a new vertex to make the graph Eulerian, finds an Euler tor, and then chooses alternating sets of edges on the tor to split the graph into two subgraphs of maximum degree 2. The paths and even cycles of each subgraph may be colored with two colors per subgraph. After this step, each remaining odd cycle contains at least one edge that may be colored with one of the two colors belonging to the opposite subgraph. Removing this edge from the odd cycle leaves a path, which may be colored using the two colors for its subgraph. A greedy coloring algorithm that considers the edges of a graph or multigraph one by one, assigning each edge the first available color, may sometimes use as many as two delta minus one colors, which may be nearly twice as many number of colors as is necessary. However, it has the advantage that it may be used in the online algorithm setting in which the input graph is not known in advance. In this setting, its competitive ratio is 2, and this is optimal. No other online algorithm can achieve a better performance. However, if edges arrive in a random order, and the input graph has a degree that is at least logarithmic, then smaller competitive ratios can be achieved. Several authors have made conjectures that imply that the fractional chromatic index of any multigraph is within one of the chromatic index. If these conjectures are true, it would be possible to compute a number that is never more than one off from the chromatic index in the multigraph case, matching what is known via Vising's theorem for simple graphs. Although unproven in general, these conjectures are known to hold when the chromatic index is at least, as can happen for multigraphs with sufficiently large multiplicity. Exact algorithms It is straightforward to test whether a graph may be edge colored with one or two colors. So the first non-trivial case of edge coloring is testing whether a graph has a three-edge coloring. As Kowalik showed, it is possible to test whether a graph has a three-edge coloring in time O, while using only polynomial space. Although this time bound is exponential, it is significantly faster than a brute force search over all possible assignments of colors to edges. Every biconnected three regular graph with n vertices has O3 edge colorings, all of which can be listed in time O, as Greg Cooperberg observed. The graph of a prism over an n two-sided polygon has many colorings, showing that this bound is tight. By applying exact algorithms for vertex coloring to the line graph of the input graph, it is possible to optimally edge color any graph with m edges. Regardless of the number of colors needed, in time 2 MMO and exponential space, or in time O and only polynomial space. However, it is tractable for other parameters. In particular, Joe, Nakano and Nishizeki showed that for graphs of tree width W, an optimal edge coloring can be computed in time OW, too. A bound that depends super exponentially on W but only linearly on the number n of vertices in the graph. Nemhauser and Park formulate the edge coloring problem as an integer program and describe their experience using an integer programming solver to edge color graphs. However, they did not perform any complexity analysis of their algorithm.